symptoms that are often dismissed as post-war stress reactions. If people don't realize they have traumatic brain injury uh, in a way that is not external, then they may see this person as just belligerent or, or non-compliant or just being a hard person to deal with. While only 20% of injured veterans in past wars suffered from TBI, doctors say more than 60% of injured troops returning from Iraq may be afflicted. The reason? New body armor that saves lives by protecting the torso, but not the brain. The base of the skull is, has a very rough surface. So imagine a very soft brain tissue exposed to rotational injury, blast injury, or concussion. Imagine the, the, the damage to the neurons inside that may or may not show on an MRI. Traumatic brain injury is not easy to detect with the usual diagnostic tools. This is an MRI scan of the brain of a man with TBI, and yet there is no visual sign of that in this image. One of the most accurate tests involves monitoring the brain waves of a person who is asked to react to facial expressions. In this test, Alec Geese is asked to push a button when he sees an angry face. On the graph, the normal reaction is marked in red. Geese is the blue line, which is a much slower than normal reaction. So the person who's not reacting quickly or as sharply to facial expressions is going to have a harder time. Exactly. If somebody's upset with you, and you don't realize it, you tend to cross the boundary. Such misunderstandings in the military can get the soldier in trouble if the brain injury is undiagnosed. It might even lead to disciplinary action. Mild cases of TBI, like Alex, often fall into that category. Severe cases are easier to diagnose, but tougher to treat. I walked into a building and an explosion happened. 23-year-old Raymond Warren is a Lance Corporal in the Marine Corps. He took shrapnel to his legs, to his stomach, to his arms, and to his head, which made the TBI diagnosis easy. He must wear a protective helmet until his skull heals. He lost much of his memory. My time in Iraq and anything before that. Really? Yeah. Warren could neither walk nor talk when he arrived at the Palo Alto facility in July. Now he can do both, but he has dreams of much more. Oh, nice. Get back to running, drive a car, stuff like that. Regular stuff? Yeah, just the normal, normal life of Raymond Warren. <laughs> but a normal life is a long way off and may look very different than his normal life of the past. When we come back, Ray relearns the basics. It takes courage and a lot of patience. I'm a little frustrated. <laughs> Why? Too much going on right now. <laughs> Boggles my mind sometimes. This is ABC News Nightline, brought to you by Charles Schwab. Ray Warren is just one of more than 350 veterans from Iraq and Afghanistan now being treated for traumatic brain injury at a handful of VA facilities. But the need for more beds is enormous as wounded veterans return. We're getting more and more every day. And it's very frustrating because we don't know when it will end. <laughs> The rehabilitation work requires months of work with a skilled team. It also requires a great deal of patience. Warren, for example, needed to relearn basic tasks, from brushing his teeth to shaving. A chart reminds him when and what to do. They, majority of them, they're incontinent, both bowel and bladder. So we had to retrain them how to use the toilet, when to use the toilet. In all TBI, 